Hey guys, I just finished uploading the last video on using CSS Grid in perspective, and I realized that I should make a follow up to compare using CSS Grid to using a perspective column container, because there are some obvious similarities there, and there are also some important differences. Let's talk about it. So I have a column container here, and I've just copied and pasted over all of the same form fields that I had in my grid form from the last video. Now, like using CSS Grid, a column container has uh, a system of columns and rows, and you can pinpoint where you want your components to be in this, uh, this type of grid or this column container. So I could say I want this component here to span all 12 of these columns, or I could say I only want it to span you know, three of these columns. Uh, Another similarity to using CSS Grid with this column container is that the column container supports multiple breakpoints. And so this way you can actually set up uh, different layouts for different screen sizes all within one view. You don't have to set up separate desktop and mobile views. Um, and that's handy. But where the differences start to show are, for one, with, with positioning. If I wanted to have a component span not just multiple columns, but multiple rows, we can do this in CSS Grid, but we can't do this with the perspective column container. So for example, in CSS Grid, we had, um, we had this upload picture component taking up multiple rows. The best we can do here is make this row larger, but I couldn't have two components off to the side of it representing separate rows. It all has to be one component can only live in one row in a column container. Another thing about positioning is that these columns are uh, always the same. They're always equally sized and they're always responsive. So if I resize my view here, you see they all shrink and grow equally. With CSS Grid, you can set these column sizes independently from one another, and they don't always have to be responsive. They could also be statically assigned. Okay. And then another important difference between the column container and CSS grid is just how easy it is to manage the positioning. Uh, so on a column container, if I want to make changes to a breakpoint, if I want to make changes to the positioning of any of these components, I actually have to get into the view and go to each of these components because all of the positioning and breakpoint settings live on each individual component versus with CSS Grid, all of that can live on the grid or in the style sheet, all in one place where you can see it all at once and make changes really easily, okay? So for example, here, if I wanted to make changes to multiple breakpoints, I would have to go through each of these components. And then, you know, I first have to have my, my column breakpoint selected and then go to my component, go to that breakpoint, make the changes to how many columns it can span, which row index it should be on, um, the column index it should start on, uh, yeah, etc. So in my personal opinion, I think that these differences make CSS Grid a lot more desirable to work with. And I think that they can also help explain why I personally don't see a lot of people using the column container. Uh, for, for responsive layouts, I oftentimes see people make separate views for a desktop view and a mobile view, and then they'll tie them together with a breakpoint container. Uh, so they're adding work that they don't really have to add, but I think that it it's, it comes down to just the usability of the column container. It's just a little bit uh, more difficult to manage. And then people don't really use CSS Grid. Uh, I think for the main reason that people don't, a lot of people who use Perspective don't really know a lot about CSS. And I was certainly this way when I got started with uh, working with Ignition. But ever since I started using CSS Grid, I've just really enjoyed using it. It's it makes designing layouts and especially making them responsive uh, a really straightforward and simple process. So if you haven't seen that video, the previous video where I walk you through how to set, set up a CSS Grid and how to use it, 
Uh, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. I may also leave a link at the top of this video if I can figure out how to do that. And uh, like always, I hope that you will like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.